Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how we can calculate the opening range breakout strategy. So how to backtest the opening range breakout strategy in Excel. And in, in the example, I will be using 30 minutes time frame, but obviously you can use any time frame that you want. So let me just quickly tell you what is opening range breakout strategy. So basically in this strategy, what we do is we find the opening range. So basically we make the candle of 30 minutes. So I'm showing you nifty of 30 minutes. And then we mark the high and the low of the first candle. Now, if the high is broken, then we go for the buying trade. So this is where we do the buying and the low becomes the stop loss. So this becomes the stop loss. And on the other hand, if the low gets broken, so if the low gets broken, I will sell at this point and my high will become the stop loss. And uh, generally, this is, uh, you, you can have a lot of variations. So you can put other stop losses and targets. But in, but in this example, I will only be showing you the very basic opening range breakout strategy where we will take the entry once the high or the low is broken and our stop loss will be the other side. And there will be no target. So in case during the day, um, the, the stop loss is not hit, we will exit at 3.30 at the end, at the closing price. So this is how the strategy looks like. So now let's see how and what is the kind of backtest results that we are getting for this strategy. Okay, so I'm showing you Excel now and uh, I've got the normal columns, the OHLC data, date and time. And as you can see, all of this is on a 30 minutes time frame. So the first thing that I would require is my start time and the end time. So let me just make a separate um, data points here. So my start and end. So my start is at, at 9.15 and my closing is at 15.15. And in this strategy, I will be using minus one as my buy signal and plus one as my sell signal. So I will be using that uh, throughout the strategy. So let's start. So the first thing that I would require is that we would need the buy level and the sell level. So the buy level and the sell level. To find the buy level is pretty easy. If the current time, because our buy level and sell level will be the high and the low of the first candle. So if the current time is equal to the start time, then my buy level becomes the high, the high price. Otherwise, it remains the previous value. It remains the previous value. So as you can see, once I do that, it will give me 8221, but I have to be careful here. I have to fix this start time. So I'm just putting a dollar sign here so that my start time is fixed to 915. And if I just double click this, you will notice that my buy level for the entire day is 8211.7, which is the high price of the first candle. And similarly, my sell level, so let me just copy it here. My sell level will be the low price provided this is the first candle. Otherwise, it will be the previous value. And that's it. So it will give me 8141.35. Um, and it remains the same for the entire day. So once we've got our buy levels and the sell levels, we will be checking whether we have got any entry or let's say slash exits. So how do we do that? Here we will be using the if and uh, the and part. So the first thing that we want to check is whether the value. So if and and I want to take, check two things. First thing I want to check is whether the high price. So whether the current candle has broken the buying level. So if this is true. If this is true and I, I will not be taking the trade at on the last candle, right? So I will not be taking the trade at 315. So I also want that my current time is not equal to S3, which is my end time. So if both the conditions are true, that means my high is broken. I will put minus one because as I said, I will be using minus one as my signal for buying. And similarly, if and now I will check if the low price, so whatever is the low of the candle, if it has broken the sell level, which is at the bottom. And again, the time is not equal to the end time. Let me again put my dollar sign. Then I will put 
one, which is a uh, cell level. And otherwise, if not, none of this is true, I will just put a zero. So let's see. If I just drag it down, you will notice that I'm getting a plus one here. So let us see why this is giving me a plus one. If you see here, the high level is not broken because 8149 is not more than 8211. But the low price, which is 8134, is less than 8141. So I would have taken the sell trade at 8141 and that is why I've got one because sell is one. So this is working correctly. So we have got our entry and exit levels whenever that is happening. But we have to be very careful here that once we have taken the entry, we do not want to take multiple entries. So I will need a column which says entry already done. So it will tell me whether I have already taken the entry or not. So for that, what I will be using is if so first I'll just check if the current time is equal to 9.15, then obviously this is the first candle. So my entry is not possible in the first candle. So I will just put a zero. That means my entry is not done. Otherwise, if my previous value, that means if the end, the previous value is also zero, that means my entry is not yet done. If my entry is not yet done, then I will just put the value of I2. So whatever is the value of I2, I will put it here. That means if my entry is not yet done, I will just see whether I've got the entry in the current candle or not, whether it is 0, 1 or minus 1. And if the previous value was anything apart from 0, that means the entry is already done, then I will just put the previous value only. So once I do that and let me drag it, so let me show you what it means. So as we can see here, on this candle, we are getting the entry, the cell level. But once we've got the cell level for the entire day, for the entire day till 1515, 15, for the entire day, it keeps on giving me one. That means it, it is telling me that my entry is already done here. My entry is already done here. I do not have to do re-entries again. Right? So this, this column basically tells me whether I've already taken an entry or not. If yes, it will keep giving me one. Otherwise, it will give me zero. So once you have done that, let's finally find out the entry price. So now let's find out the entry price again for the entry prices. If it's a buying uh, entry, I will put negative since I'm using here. And if it's a selling entry, I will put positive. So let's see what, what would be my entry price. So I'll be using if again. Now I, again, I have to check two things. The first thing I want to check is that currently uh, sorry, in the previous candle, it is entry is not done. That means I can still take an entry. So the previous candle should be zero. That means entry is not done. As we just saw that if the previous value of this column, J column is zero, that means the entry is not done. So first thing is we do not want to take the re-entry. So J1 is equal to zero. And if the current value of J, let's say is equal to minus one, that means Previously, the entry was not done, but now I have taken, I have got the entry, which is a negative entry, which is a negative entry. That means it's a sell entry. Uh, sorry, it's a buying entry. So that means what I have to do is I will put the buying price as minus G2, which is a buying level. And similarly, if and, and my previous value was zero, but the current value is equal to one, which is uh, selling entry in that case I will be giving a positive H2 because now I will be selling at this point and otherwise it's it just remains zero so let us see what happens so once I do this you can see that this is where I'm getting my first entry it is telling me 8134.35 is the entry price why because my low has broken the sell level and it's a positive number because selling is positive and then it is not taking re-entries, even though I am getting another one here, but it is not taking re-entries. So that is what the reason we have used this J column. So this seems to be working. So we have got our entry prices. Let's see how many um, entries we have got in about last six years. So I'll just quickly put my, um, and we'll just remove all the zeros. So we can see we've got about 1,471 entries. So we've already got about 1,471 entries. Let's go ahead and do the exit part now. So the entry is working fine. Let's go ahead and do the exit part. Similar to the last one, we will need if exit already done. This is going to be slightly 
uh, complicated so let's do it one uh, one by one if first thing i want to check is if my current time is equal to the starting price and obviously exit is not done so i will just put it zero then again an if and and then what i want to check is whether the current time whether the current time is the end time is this because anyway we have to take an exit right this is an intraday strategy so now i have to check whether my time has reached the end time the last candle so that means if the current time is equal to the end time and along with that along with that let's say that my entry which was done the entry already done was one so i was already in the sell trade so i was in the sell trade and i have reached the end the last candle of the day in that case i will have to um, buy it now i will have to exit it so i will make it minus one so because it was a plus one it will become a minus one here similarly i will check if and and if my time is equal to the end time again and this time i'm checking let me again make this dollar and this time i'm checking whether my j2 is equal to minus one that means we were already in a buying trade that means i will sell it this time so i put a plus one this time now we will check again another if condition now what i want to check is that whether the j2 uh, or basically what we are trying to see is so the first part that we have uh, done so far is we have checked for our exit due to time at at the last candle we are exiting so that's the first check that we have done now the check the second check we are doing is whether we have got the stop loss hit or not so for that what i want to do is if l1 is equal to 0 that means my i I have not yet taken an exit if if i have not yet taken the exit in that case what i'll be needing to do is i'll i'll be uh, updating my formula so let's now talk about how to exit uh, when our stop loss is hit so as i was saying you um, we are first checking if i have not yet taken the exit that means my previous value of this column is zero and then all i have to check is whether the current j2 that means i the or the entry that was done let's say that was a positive number so that was a sell trade and during the same time the new exit is negative so i was already in a sell trade and now i've got a buying entry that means my stop loss is it in that case i will put the exit as minus one and similarly we'll do the other way around if and Again, the J2 value, the J2 value, which is this one, if this is minus one and the current value is plus one, in that case, I will make it plus one. So I will exit with a positive number. And once I've got that done, all I have to do is update to the previous value. So in case not, none of this is happening, that means my uh, currently my exit is not happening i will just update to the previous value which is l1 and i will update it further to l1 and that should give me the result so let's run it so as you can see this is where it will it is giving me a minus one the reason why it's giving me a minus one is because this is a 315 so this is a 315 candle so that's why it's giving me a minus one Let's check again. This is giving me a plus one because it's the 315 candle. But see this. Now this is interesting. You can see that I got the entry here at 8213. So we, we were able to buy it because the price went above 8213. But during this candle, in this candle, you will notice that the low price 8180 went below 8191. That means my stop loss got hit. My stop loss got hit. And that is why it is telling me to make a one right here itself to make it a one right here itself so this exit already done is also working so all i need to do is do the exit price now to get the exit price done and this is very similar to my 
entry price so we will quickly do it if l1 is equal to 0 so i have not yet taken the exit and if this is equal to minus 1 in that case i will make it minus buying level otherwise if and this is equal to 0 and current is equal to plus 1 in that case i will make it positive h2 comma 0 and once we do that let's see the results so we are getting the results now uh, whenever we are getting the exit we are getting the prices now but the only problem here is at the 315 candle because you can see that at 315 candle we have to take the exit at the closing price but currently this is taking the exit on the level on the buying level so we'll have to make another final exit column which will take care of this 315 value because the 315 exit should not be at 8211 it should be at 8178 so let's quickly make this final exit column also if and all i have to check is if the current time is equal to the end time and along with that if the exit is happening as a if it's more than zero so that means i've taken the exit and it's a positive exit in that case i will make it plus closing price and similarly if and if this is equal to the time let me just fix this and now the value of m2 is less than zero that means a negative exit in that case i will just make it minus the closing price otherwise it will just remain whatever is the actual exit whatever is the actual exit so let's quickly run this and now you will notice that this is getting changed to the closing price this is getting changed to the closing price but whenever the exit is happening in the middle so because of the stop loss it is not changing the price it is keeping it similar so we've got our exits also let's see if the exit prices are correct and we've got all the exits or not okay so we've got our final exit also now all you have to do is just let's do the trade taken which is the final exit plus the entry price and now this is telling me what all trades we have taken all the entries and all the exits so once we have done that our um, our orb is ready now let's just add the the filter and I, i'm just removing all the zeros so we've got all the trades listed now so i'll just quickly make a summary also so for the summary we would be requiring the date and we will be requiring all the trades taken but as you can see these are these are all the buying and the selling trades so entry exit entry exit so we have to make them in a single uh, we have to make it in a better format so what i'm doing is i've just copied the dates again i'm going to data and i'm going to just remove the duplicates so i've got all the unique dates on which we took the trade and let's see the pnl so if we talk about the pnl I will use the function sumif of the dates and trade taken and that will give me the PNL per day. This is giving me the PNL per day where we can also check out the cumulative PNL. That's a simple formula of current price plus the previous value. And let's quickly make our graph as well. And this is how the cumulative PNL looks like. So in about six years, the strategy has given around 90 to 100 points in about six years. Um, so total points is 92 46. Number of years is six. That means on average, I'm making around 1540 points on average. Um, even if we take the lot size as 50, um, it's giving a decent profit of almost 77,000 rupees per year. But you have to notice one thing very important that you will have to take care of all the um, the costs, the slippage costs. So this profit will reduce. But overall, you can see the strategies look giving decent profits.
So I hope you liked the video and you understood how we can find out the op opening range breakout strategy and how to backtest it. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.